What's up everybody, welcome to a new video for today and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I was able to scale one of my Shopify stores from zero dollars in sales, a brand new store, to well over $50,000 within two weeks. I think it was the 13th day that we hit $50,000 in sales. So get comfortable because it's going to be a good one. Let's do it. All right, everyone, if you know me, you know I start every single video off with a consultant call, a free consultant call that anyone who watches this video is eligible to win. So all you have to do to be eligible to win a free consultant call is one, be subscribed. It's pretty easy. Just click that red button. Two, like this video, just click that blue button or whatever color it is. And three, comment to ecom along with a video you want to see me make in the future. And that's it. You're entered to win. All right, so the winner of today's consultant call is David Bueller. David, you commented to ecom. I would love to see a video about ClickFunnels. Well, it's a great recommendation, David. Message me on Instagram with your phone number and your name, and we can set up a time to talk about whatever you want. It's a free consultant call. Congratulations once again. Uh, you guys know how to win a free consultant call. Now that we covered that, let's get on into the video. All right, let me hop into my laptop, show you guys my numbers, and so I can back up what I'm talking about. All right, so we're here in my Shopify store. You guys can see right here, $53,607 in sales. I think it's actually more than that. Let me refresh the page. Uh, 6400 for the day. 144 orders. We're doing pretty well. I think I'm about, um, yeah, 600. There we go. All right, so I refreshed it. I'll refresh it again while I'm talking about it just to show you guys that this is real. And I'll go over here. This week, we're at about $25,000. You can see we're hovering about at least $5,000 a day. We're trying to scale. Right now, I'm actually scaling with a disabled or a restricted user Facebook account. My whole user account on Facebook got banned. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Facebook does not do a great job at customer support. Thank you, Facebook. It's been two weeks now. It's literally, my, my user account was disabled on the 12th and I've been scaling this store. I'll show you guys the actually analytics. My user account was disabled right here on the 14th. It's actually only been 10 days. My user account was disabled on the 14th. You can see this was, I thank God I was disabled then because we actually scaled, I launched some lookalikes actually and, and a whole bunch of new ad sets basically. So thank God it got disabled that day and not the day before because that would have sucked. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to scale nearly as much as I have now. We had the same budget on October 14th as we did on the 15th. So we did a lot more in sales, but then you guys can see right here, Facebook ads, they, they start to diminish a little bit if you don't do anything to your ads. You need to be tweaking them, you need to be uh, well, not tweaking them too much, but you need to be constantly looking at your data and making new ad sets um, based on that data. And for me, I can't create any new ad sets. I can only edit the ad sets that are currently active because my user account is restricted. So I, the only thing I could do was raise the budget on the ad sets that were profitable. Thank God I had a whole bunch of profitable ad sets. I think I have around 50 ad sets right now running around three different campaigns and then one engagement campaign. But I've only shut off around four or five different ad sets and I've been scaling, doubling the budgets of the, every other ad set. Uh, about every two to three days. So it's been doing very well. As you guys can see right here, we scaled. Uh, I scaled on the 18th, <clears throat> increased the budget, went from 3,000 to 4,000, and then went down a little bit. And then I scaled again on October 20th, and then we started doing $5,000 a day. Now I'm going to scale again tonight. Hopefully it goes well. Wish me luck. I'm going to increase my budgets. I got an $800 a day ad set and a $400 a day ad set, doing very well. The cost per purchase is pretty crazy. Uh, let me actually, I know, screw it. I guess I'll show you. This is today, as you guys can see right here, your advertising access is restricted. I'm talking really fast, let me slow down. Um, I don't know why it was disabled. It was disabled on Columbus Day, which was a holiday, so I assume that it was disabled from algorithm and it wasn't a human actually disabling it, but we're trying to figure it out. Facebook is taking their sweet time, so this ad account most likely will be uh, back up and running within the next week or two, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, it's doing very well. Let me show you guys some of these ad sets actually. Uh, I don't have anything titled, but you can see right here, $800 daily budget. This one's getting a cost per purchase of $8.46. Now, obviously, Facebook isn't going to track every single purchase, so it's probably around $7.50 because this is my big biggest ad set. These are all performing super, super well. These all started at $10 a day. These top two started at $100 a day, and I've been scaling them ever since. Um, <clears throat> but these all started at $10 a day, and I've just been doubling the budget every 48 to 72 hours, like I said. Uh, if we go to... We go to the 10th to uh, the 24th. I've spent 8,000 on ads. It's going to only track 40,000. This is one campaign out of. If I add my lookalike campaign in my other cold targeting campaign, it's $10,409 and it shows around 48,560. So obviously, Facebook did not track around like five, $6,000 in sales. 349 purchases, 866. Um, these ad sets are performing very, very well. I wish I could break them down and make them perform even better, but I'm literally unable to create any new ad sets. I can't duplicate. I can only edit the ones that are currently active. I'd be doing probably around ten to $15,000 a day with this store, guaranteed 
if I was able to create the lookalike audiences that I wanted to create. Unfortunately, I can't literally create any lookalike audiences. Well, I can create the audiences, but I'm unable to actually use them. I, I'm un unable to make a new ad set and implement those audiences. I can only change the ad sets that are already running and change the audience, which is not something I want to do. And I can't retarget either. So that's just, there, there's a lot I'm missing out on right now, a lot of profit, and <clears throat> we can only thank Facebook for that. But uh, hopefully that gets solved soon. So I guess this goes to show um, that you don't need to have some crazy Facebook ad strategy to be successful. I mean, these ad sets I just showed you, I've literally been increasing the budget. I can't tell you guys my exact Facebook strategy. That's for people who are in the program. You get to see absolutely everything. You get to see me scale. You get to see me, uh, you get to see me break down these ad sets. Literally ad sets that I make, you know, I spend $10,000 to make $40,000, $50,000 back. You guys get to see all that in the program, but um, that is for only the members of the program. I can't show that on YouTube. So if you're interested, that'll be the first link in the description. But I will say I started off with uh, some very basic ad sets. I don't target really uh, specific interests. I do very, very general targeting. So if I'm gonna target, I'm gonna use this as an example. Okay, let's just see this right here. This product is a cool product. Um, it's a pinky ring, or a pinky watch, excuse me. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So this is a pinky watch. It's pretty cool. It's literally a ring. You put it on your pinky and you can tell the time. Now, if I was gonna sell this product, I'd wanna obviously target people who are interested in rings, who are interested in watches. Those are probably the first two interests that I would use. I'm gonna use very, very general interests because it's working. Facebook really likes general audience. Facebook likes to have some wiggle room to pick and choose who they think would best fit your buyer. So. Like I said, I've been using a lot of general audiences and it's been working very well. It's also pretty great because when I make general audiences at work, I can now scale those like I just, like I'm doing right now, uh, really, really easily by doubling the budget or increasing the budget every 48 to 72 hours, like I just mentioned. And because the audience sizes are, you know, 20 million plus probably for a lot of them, I can increase the budgets and I can scale for a long, long time without worrying about exhausting my audience. It just sucks because I can't make any look like audiences right now, which I know would do very, very well. I've got some look like audiences. The only look likes I've made so far that are running, I think I just have four ad sets that are uh, view content look likes, you know, zero to 2%, two to 4%, four to 6%, six to 8%. I don't think I did eight to 10%, but the 2% is actually doing very, very well. Anyways, now that I've talked about my store a little bit, I just wanna talk about how I was able to make this possible, how uh, I can scale so fast, uh, my product research, my fulfillment, basically and everything that comes with uh, scaling a store from zero to 50K in less than two weeks. So first off, this isn't something that really like happens a lot. This is not something that you should expect to happen to you. I've been selling on Shopify for the past two years or so, two and a half years. Um, so I know exactly what I'm doing. I know how to create stores. I know how to run Facebook ads because I've been doing it for years now. I know exactly what strategies work. I know exactly what strategies don't work. And I know how to start a product, launch it, make a website, all that kind of stuff. I know how to do it already. So that part isn't really something I worry about. The biggest part is the product. The product is what's going to sell no matter what. If you have a horrible site, but an amazing product, you're still going to make a lot of money. I mean, I mentioned in previous videos, the store that I'm talking about uh, is, is a free theme. I'm using the debut theme and I'm not using any premium theme. I'm not using any special stuff. I'm literally using the debut theme and it's working very, very well. You don't need to have a special theme. You don't need to have a premium theme. You can do super well on the very basic debut theme. It actually loads faster than pretty much every other theme out there. So I would definitely recommend it. Anyways, it comes down to finding the right product like I just mentioned. If you have a product that you think is going to do very, very well, then I would make a one product store. If you have a, a, a product that you think you could sell with different upsells in a certain niche, like just say I'm selling, you know, I use this as an example a lot, but I'm selling this one gold plated rose. This could be a great product to sell in a niche store that sells also other kind of jewelry or other kind of necklaces or other kind of pendants or a product similar to this. You know, you could upsell very well. But if you're selling one product with it, that it's, you can kind of only upsell it with the same product, I, I'd make a one product store. And just so you guys know, gifts do very, very, very well during this time of the year and throughout the rest of this year. You know, it, it's the season of giving. So if you have some really good gifts that you can sell, uh, or, or products that would be very good gifts that you think would have you know the wow factor that people would literally stop scrolling and think I need this or they'd comment on it or you can make it into a meme or whatever that those are the products that you want to sell I wouldn't sell like a, a handy tool or like some kind of screwdriver or any like home goods yeah so basically what I did was I tested a whole bunch of different products now you guys see this one store hit fifty thousand dollars but you don't see uh, the plenty of other stores I've created that I have not shared that did not hit fifty thousand dollars that were not profitable so I test all the time you always have to be testing this is a game where you test 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 don't get discouraged if you start some stores and they don't work you know I started I don't even know how many stores I started actually I started a whole bunch of stores before I found one that really popped off and I lost a couple thousand dollars before I made a lot of thousand dollars even when this product is working I'm still testing other products because 
nothing is guaranteed to, to work for a long time. I want to sell this store, you know, for six figures in a couple months and I want to start something new. That's the name of the game. That's how we do it. So always be testing products. I have a general store. I test a lot of products on this product in specific did very well on my general store. So I moved it on over to a different store. Now when I test products, you don't need to create 20 different ad sets at $10 a day to see if the products are winning product or not. I usually start with uh, five to 10 ad sets. I won't tell you my exact number. That's a secret for the people inside the program. But I start with a, a very, like a handful of ad sets, not a lot. And if it works great, if it doesn't, then I move on. I don't get attached to any of the products and I find products that will really pop off on the first day. This product popped off on the first day. I did 159, 160 bucks in sales and I spent less than 40 bucks. After then, I really, I had my base set. I just created new ad sets. I tested a couple different interests. If I find an interest that's working, I'm gonna create more interests and more ad sets similar to that one interest. Well, right now I can't because I'm disabled, but if I wasn't disabled, I would. Now, an issue I see a lot of people try to make when they try to get started with Shopify is they try to sell apparel. They try to sell apparel or products like shoes. And these products can have some obvious errors. The first biggest error being sizing. If you have a shirt you're selling with eight different sizes and you're getting it from AliExpress, I can pretty much guarantee you that that shirt, if it's a small, it's not a US small, it's probably China small, and that's completely different. So the sizing is not the same in China as it is uh, in the US. So it's different. I gotta turn that down, it's way too loud. But basically, you need to make sure that your sizing is correct. You're gonna get a lot of refunds if you don't have the correct sizing. So I don't sell apparel, I don't sell shoes, I don't sell products that have really specific sizing. I sell what you see is what you get kind of products, one size products that don't have sizing variants, maybe just color variants. And I sell products that are going to have a very small return rate because they what you see is basically what you get. The only reason for you to want to return the product is if it was damaged uh, while shipping to you basically. So that pretty much sums it up for today's video guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, I just wanted to give some insight on this new store I created and I'm starting to scale right now. Everybody pray for me, for me to get my Facebook ad account re-enabled or my user account re-enabled Facebook is screwing me over right now. They're screwing me over, but I'm trying to, but I'm trying to win this battle. So uh, pray for me. Give me a like down below. One like equals one prayer. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any videos you want to see me make in the future, just leave a comment down below. And if you include ecom with an M, some people commented with an N last time. If you include ecom with an M, then you're entered to win a free consultant call. And you and I could talk, sort out any issues you have, build your business, get a game plan going. Uh, and talk about whatever you want. I mean, it's a free consulting call. Although I will say I am not the best marriage counselor. So if you're, if you're looking for that, I can't help you out. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Like and subscribe. I love you. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.